Live, local, now. This is Texas Today HD. We're going to have a special report on Pope Francis' inaugural mass this morning. What the scene looked like. And a domestic dispute in Waco quickly turns violent Monday night. We'll have all the details on that. And what if a phone call to 911 revealed your information to the operator immediately on the other side of the line? More on the new technology that Bell County is finalizing. Topping our news now this half hour, of course, the inauguration of Pope Francis. Yeah, it's a big day. The world is watching. Hundreds of thousands of people are in St. Peter's Square this morning to mark the occasion. And NBC's Matt Lauer is live in Rome. He's part of the team with NBC that's been covering the events that are taking place there. And let's throw it out to uh, Rome right now and the major capital there of Italy and find out what's going on. Here's Matt Lauer. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to an NBC News special report on a beautiful day here in Vatican City. I'm Matt Lauer for the historic installation of Pope Francis. And we have some breaking news to tell you about now. Our NBC affiliate out of San Antonio, it's uh, the studio, the building has caught fire. Yeah, WOAI, many of you know it if you're from the San Antonio area, caught fire around 530 this morning. So it just happened. They actually put their anchors outside. The power is lost. The building has lost power. We want to show you what their morning crew had to say. As you can see behind us, firefighters continue to battle what's left of a fire here at WOAI. Ladders are still there. No flames coming out of the building right now. Everybody's been evacuated okay, and power has been shut off. It's been shut off due to precaution. You can see our sign that was illuminated not that long ago, now dark. That also means our signal is off the air. We'll continue to give you updates right here on our Facebook page. Okay, again, we want to stress to everybody that what we heard, there's no one was hurt. Fortunately, the building was fully evacuated, but a very strange thing there. Welcome back, everybody. On your Wednesday morning, state lawmakers discussed passing a bill yesterday that would pay for weapon training and allow teachers to carry a gun on campus. It would apply to public school districts and charter schools that don't already have armed security guards. The Texas Department of Public Safety would handle the firearm training for two employees per campus. The bill was not passed, but left pending instead. It will be taken up as soon as the Senate reaches a general agreement. Accused Fort Hood shooter Nadal Hassan returns to post for another pretrial hearing today. At issue, to what extent an expert terrorism witness will be allowed to testify. Judge Tara Osborne could also rule on a change of venue that was discussed in the last hearing. Hassan's trial is scheduled for July the 1st. He's accused, of course, of killing 13 people and wounding 32 others in the November 2009 Fort Hood massacre. Our web team will be live blogging today's hearing, so you can get in on that action. Just head over to our website, kcentv.com, starting at 10 a.m. this morning. DNA testing could soon be required for death penalty cases here in Texas. Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott voiced his support for the measure, which would ensure that innocent people aren't executed, we hope. Supporters also say that it would cut down on the number of appeals, which delays justice for victims' families. Under current state law, DNA testing is not required prior to trial in capital cases. And DNA evidence was, is what exonerated Michael Morton. That's a man who was wrongfully convicted of his wife's murder and imprisoned for 25 years of his life that he can't get back. A year and a half ago, he was exonerated after another man, Mark Norwood, was connected to the murder based on DNA evidence. Norwood's trial began on Monday at the Tom Green County Courthouse in San Angelo. The trial for the 58-year-old is expected to take about two weeks. Well, fewer people are illegally crossing America's border with Mexico, but the region saw a big increase in immigrant deaths in 2012, according to a recent report. U.S. Border Patrol identified 477 deaths along the southwest border, up from 375 the year before. This according to the report from the National Foundation for American Policy, an Arlington, Virginia-based group that researches immigration issues. According to the NFAP analysis, an immigrant attempting to cross legally into the U.S. today is eight times more likely to die in an attempt than a decade ago. The report also stated that a five-fold increase in the number of Border Patrol agents over the past two decades may have resulted in immigrants venturing into more dangerous areas to make the crossing. And Texas senators have now approved a bill that would limit future statewide office holders to two consecutive terms. The Senate advanced the proposed amendment to the House with a vote of 27 to 4. The bill still has to be approved by voters, however. The amendment would apply to governors, lieutenant governors, attorneys general, and state agency commissioners. However, it would not apply to judges or the legislators themselves. Also, the proposal would exempt Rick Perry who has been elected to three consecutive terms. New video into the dorm room of a former Florida college student who was allegedly planning a deadly attack is now been released.
This is video released by University of Central Florida Police showing officers entering James Vakuraman's dorm with guns drawn. You can hear the fire alarm blaring in the background. Police say that he pulled the alarm early Monday morning in an attempt to get the 500 students in the building to rush outside. The video shows police entering the man's room and then finding the 30-year-old dead on the floor. Authorities say he killed himself. They also found weapons and 1,000 rounds of ammunition as well as four homemade bombs. Millimeter mortar rounds suddenly exploded. In the aftermath of the tragic accident, the military has now issued a moratorium on firing similar mortars until an investigation has been completed. A memorial service to honor those who died was held at the Hawthorne Army Depot on Tuesday night. And an update now to a story we first brought you on Monday. Waco police are now investigating an officer involved shooting after a U.S. Marshal shot a man in the face and that man later died of his injury. 30 year old Rancini Richardson was wanted for felony assault, criminal trespass and had a state warrant for parole violation. U.S. Marshals were warned he was armed and dangerous. They attempted to arrest Richardson in his car Monday. Officers asked Richardson to show his hands. Instead, he reached downward. That's when a marshal shot Richardson. He was taken to Hillcrest Hospital, where he later died. Waco PD says the marshal fired his weapon in self-defense. The teenager who killed three students and injured three others at a shooting rampage at his high school last year was given three life sentences without parole on Tuesday. But shortly before the judge handed down the sentence, T.J. Lane unbuttoned his blue dress shirt to reveal his T-shirt underneath with the word killer scrawled out on it. Lane then made obscene gestures toward the victim's families and laughed as relatives addressed the court. The judge said Lane's crime and lack of remorse warranted the stiff prison sentence. And we do have some breaking news this morning now to get to out of Colleen. We have an update on a standoff that started yesterday afternoon. Texas Today's Rebecca Schleicher joins us now live from the 3600 block of Tatanka Road. Rebecca, what is the latest on the scene out there? Well, Steph, Chris, after 15 and a half hours, the standoff is finally over. Police and SWAT team members went into the home and brought him out by force just before 5 o'clock this morning. You can see the command center is still set up behind me. They're still here cleaning up the area uh, and assessing the rest of the situation, finding evidence. Roads are still closed. You can see the cops here uh, stopping traffic from coming through here on Bunny Trail, the bigger road in this area and other roads around here are are still closed. Uh, they were also uh, finally letting people back into their homes. They said about five or six homes were evacuated in this area for the homeowner's safety. They are now finally, after 15 and a half hours, allowed to return home from the Colleen Community Center where they did spend the night. They were evacuated around 1.30 when police first got the call yesterday. A couple got into an argument and the the woman escaped with their daughter and was worried the man might hurt himself. A welfare check quickly turned into a standoff once he barricaded himself inside the home. He did have weapons inside and was threatening to commit suicide, so negotiators worked with him throughout the night. He actually came to the window a few times to talk to them. Finally, at around 456, they went in and got him without a problem. Roads will be open soon enough, they said, especially within the next 45 minutes to an hour. They expect to completely uh, have this place back open uh, as if nothing happened. They're saying that they're just happy that they finished this without incident. And now, after 15 and a half hours, they're all finally able to go home. Chris, Stephanie news that it came to an end there. Thanks so much, Rebecca. We'll be checking in with her a little, little bit later on throughout the morning. Yeah, keep us updated, Rebecca. The names of the seven Marines killed in a training exercise has been released. We'll hear from their family and friends. And in Houston, two police officers were shot during a domestic dispute called their condition this morning. And a social media giant is celebrating its big birthday today. How old? It's turning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into Texas today. And moving on now to your news this morning. Uh, that news of the seven Marines who were killed from an explosion at a Nevada Army Depot. All men were under the age of 26 years old. We do have their names and their photographs here. Joshua Martino, Taylor Wild the fourth, also killed was Roger Munchik and Mason Vanderwerk, seen here. Joshua Taylor, David Fenn, and Aaron Riperta. They were all killed when a mortar shell exploded at the Hawthorne Depot on Monday, and now family and friends are speaking out about their loved ones. It happens. Uh, and fortunately, it was my son and, and six other uh, American heroes. Taylor was a great kid, uh, a hero. He's the best. 
I only knew from 11 years. I wish I could have known him more. Well, you can just feel the pain there from the families. The military has now stopped all firing on similar mortars until an investigation has been completed. We'll begin our news now this half hour with more violence in Israel as President Obama prepares to meet with the head of the Palestinian Authority. Yeah, we just got word into our newsroom this morning of two rocket attacks in southern Israel. The rocket fire came amid protests of President Obama's meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas today. Nobody was hurt due to these, though, fortunately. Very little is known about what was said in the meeting today, except that peace is in the interests of Israel. Foreign policy experts say the U.S. could play a key role here. Unless the Americans exert leadership and push both sides to reach an understanding and hopefully final peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis, this issue will always be exploited by the radicals in the region. President Obama will be in Jerusalem today speaking to the youth there. Also new this morning, North Korea is making another threat toward the U.S. The country warned of military action in retaliation for U.S. bombers flying over the Korean Peninsula last week. A statement was released Thursday on state TV. It said the drill was a hostile act aimed at encroaching upon the sovereignty of North Korea. The flights were part of a joint U.S.-South Korea military drill. This is not the first time the North has protested the drills, but this time the North's protests have been sharper than usual. Stricter gun law legislation has been signed into law in Colorado, and they're now the toughest in the country. Those new laws expand background checks to include private purchases and online sales. They also limit the size of ammunition magazines to 15 rounds or eight for shotgun shells. This comes on the same day that Colorado's Department of Corrections executive director was gunned down as he answered the door at his Denver home Wednesday. It's incredibly tragic and sad coincidence that, that we have to process all this in, in, in a single day. The gun law measures were introduced in the Democratic controlled state legislature early this year and did pass quickly. This puts Colorado among states at the front of the national gun control debate. Meantime, a manhunt is underway for that suspect who shot and killed that top member of the governor's cabinet on Tuesday. Tom Clements was the director for the Department of Corrections in Colorado. Police are using search dogs and going house to house in an all out effort to gather information. Officers say they still don't have a motive for that killing. The Federal Reserve delivered mixed news about the future of the economy. The U.S. Central Bank said there is more consensus that the unemployment rate will continue to drop. As of last month, the U.S. unemployment rate stood at 7.7 percent. The Federal Reserve says it expects it could fall as low as 7.3 percent before the end of the 2013 year. Fed policymakers voted to keep short-term interest rates near zero and will continue to buy billions of dollars in mortgage-backed securities as part of the ongoing effort to stimulate our economy. Federal employees protested around the nation, thousands. At the Labor Department in Washington, D.C., dozens of people chanted and carried signs calling on Congress to end the sequester. Protesters say the longer the budget crisis continues, the deeper the cuts to federal workers and facilities. That was the same message shared in Chicago, San Antonio, Texas as well. At least two dozen federal agencies, including the Department of Labor, EPA, the FAA and FBI have already issued furlough notices. And those sequestration cuts are also hitting Central Texas pretty hard. We are seeing losses everywhere from jobs to education right here in our own backyard. KCEN HD news reporter Amanda Kenny shows us how Central Texans are now fighting back. And nationwide unemployment numbers are down across the country, of course, but there's one group uh, down below 8%, but there's one group whose unemployment rate does remain higher than what is average nationwide. That's right, veteran unemployment is around 10%, and for our military spouses, that number is even higher. Texas Today's Rebecca Schleicher joins us now live from Fort Hood, where a Chamber of Congress initiative hopes to change that today. Rebecca, this is the second year for an event they're calling Hiring Our Heroes. Good morning. Steph, Chris, more than 60 both local and national employers plan to be here today. They've all already pledged to hire military spouses. I'm joined this morning by Laura Dempsey. She's helped organize job fairs like this all around the country. Uh, Laura, will you tell us why the need for a job fair uh, geared specifically toward military spouses? One punishment handed down by a school teacher in Kentucky has parents talking. Ashley Owens, a student there, admitted to accidentally smudging a student's name on the board from a list of those who talked in class. So her teacher made her empty out her locker into her backpack to carry around for the rest of the week. Ashley weighs only 50 pounds and her parents weighed the backpack. Of course, it's nearly half of her weight. Push your kid like that, 
and that brings Big Daddy in it. And Dad don't like it when people messes with his kids. Well, for the time being, Ashley's parents have taken her out of school, not wanting her to carry that weight, of course, on her shoulders. Interesting. Poor little girl there. Oh, okay, no. well, the Maine State Lottery was trying to increase their sales of scratch-off tickets with a new marketing strategy. Okay, the concept was to come up with a catchy name, but it might have done more harm than good. Gary's Quick Shop in Richmond sells hundreds of instant scratch tickets every day. So the state's Bureau of Alcoholic Beverages and Lottery Operations thought it could sell more by branding the tickets under a catchy new name. And that new name is Quickie, spelt with a K. The store clerks and customers alike did not approve. Asking if they want a Quickie is not appropriate. What does Quickie mean to you? Um, it has a sexual connotation to it. <laughs> lottery officials uh, oh. say they knew the concept would be controversial, but thought overall it was funny. The bureau director says they will now drop the concept. I wonder what um, our friends over at Waco 100 think about this. Well, Jim is here today. I understand Zach's got the day off. Let's check in with Jim over at Waco 100. Good morning, Jim. Hi, kids. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Good. We're great. The question is, how are you, my friend? It's now 658. Here are the six things you need to know before you go. Number one, accused Fort Hood shooter Nadal Hassan will not be allowed to plead guilty on all counts. Number two, two rocket attacks hit southern Israel this morning as President Obama prepares to meet with a Palestinian president to discuss peace. Three North Korea warned the U.S. today of military action and retaliation for U.S. bombers just flying over the Korean Peninsula last week. Number four, General Motors is recalling nearly 34,000 vehicles, including the 2013 Buick LaCrosse full-size car, 2013 Cadillac SRX crossover SUVs as well, due to a problem with the automatic transmission. Number five, Walmart is testing its new Scan and Go program. Shoppers can scan items with an Apple device and then pay for them at self-checkout terminals. And the sixth thing you need to know if you're married to an active duty soldier, guard, reserve, or retired veteran, you're welcome to attend a job fair today at Club Hood. Hi everybody, welcome back. A very special morning here on Texas Today. The Mejia women's basketball team fresh off of their state title win in Austin. They dominated Rebecca. Absolutely, these Lady Cats are on fire. They lost to only two teams the entire year. And we want to welcome senior Brichelle Beecham and of course coach Randy Barger here along with the rest of the state championship. In this morning's Military Matters, you're going to see more of those unmanned drones over the skies of Central Texas. Fort Hood is now home to the Army's newest in unmanned aircrafts. The Gray Eagle took its first daytime flight yesterday. Those are going to become more frequent as the 21st Cavalry Brigade learns to use them. KCEN HD News reporter Sophia Stamas shows us just how protected your privacy. Now we've got a special treat for you live at the Farrell Center this morning. Has to do with basketball. That's absolutely right. That's where we find Rebecca Schleicher. Good morning, Rebecca. What's going on out there today? Hey, good morning, Chris. Steph, well, I'm checking back in from the Farrell Center right now and uh, in just a week's time, the Globetrotters will be here playing one of their famous games. But uh, this morning, we actually have a preview. Cheese, yeah. cheese I'm here with me this morning. Oh, yes. We love it here. Back here, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says they'll probably take up gun control sometime early this year. In Washington, for Texas Today, I'm Tracy Potts. Chris, Stephanie.